Uh, for this lecture, we're looking at um, a form poem, and the form poem we're going to look at is the sonnet. We're looking at John Gillespie McGee's High Flight, as well as Diane Ackerman's Sweep Me Through Your Many Chambered Heart. The objectives are for the McGee poem, High Flight, biography, poem, form, and the fame of the poem. For Ackerman's uh, biography of her, uh, the poem, and form and content. So John Gillespie McGee Jr. was born in 1922 and died in 1941. He was an American serving with the Royal Canadian Air Force when he wrote the famous High Flight poem. He died while serving in the Royal Canadian Air Force in Squadron 412 during the Second World War. He wrote his now famous sonnet on the back of a letter to his mother. And uh, this is High Flight. You have a link to it. I'm, I'm not going to read it because um, other people have read it far more beautifully than I could. So it is an English um, or a Shakespearean sonnet. You can use those ter two terms interchangeably. And it breaks from this form in stanzas and in its rhyme. So it is a three stanza poem separated in two, into two quatrains. That means it has the two first stanzas are four lines each. And a, the final stanza is a sextet, which is six lines. Thus, it has a total of 14 lines, like a, like a traditional English sonnet. And like a traditional English sonnet, there are 10 syllables in each line. Um, it breaks in rhyme from the traditional Shakespearean pattern. Uh, McGee's poem's rhyme scheme is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, G, F, G. So the traditional Shakespearean or English sonnet is divided into four stanzas, uh, comprising, again, 14 lines in total. And the first three stanzas are all quatrains, four lines each, and the final stanza is a couplet consisting of two lines. English sonnets um, have... 10 syllables in iambic pentameter. A volta, which um, is an Italian word for turn, a uh, turn of direction, um, an epiphany, something that uh, turns you from where you think you're headed within the sonnet into a dif different direction. Uh, the volta appears normally in the third quatrain. Um, the rhyme scheme for a traditional English or Shakespearean sonnet is ABAB, as in the first stanza of um, McGee's, CDCD, like McGee's second stanza, and ends in EFEF for the third quatrain and a rhyming couplet. So he varies in his final um, sextet stanza, he varies that rhyme scheme. Uh, within days of McGee's death, High Flight had been reprinted in newspapers across the United States. His uh, parents, his mother was British, his father American. Uh, his parents were located in Washington, D.C. at the time of his death. Uh, the United States had just entered into the Second World War in the South Pacific. So um, up to this point, they had not been involved in the, the Second World War. It wasn't until Japan bombed Pearl Harbor that America entered into the Second World War. Their war is primarily fought in the South Pacific. They do not enter the Europe part of the Second World War until um, I think the last few months, I think the last three months of the war. Most of America's fighting is done in the South Pacific with Japan. So um, an American's death happening just just days into um, their own um, war in the South Pacific. Uh, they interviewed uh, McGee's family and he, he made it into the newspapers. His father um, had printed out a, the, a copy of the poem on a pamphlet he had handed out in church and he gave uh, reporters visiting his home uh, asking about his son. He gave them this handout and it had the poem in it. So um, the poem kind of uh, went through America, Canada, and Britain kind of that way after his death. Um, uh, 
Canada also um, handed out the poem in uh, kind of placards to um, all of uh, their soldiers, etc. Um, British fighter pilots were carrying it in their pockets. Um, he is hailed as the first poet of the Second World War, and he was hailed as the first poet of the Second World War by Archibald MacLeish, who was the Librarian of Congress at, in Washington, D.C. Um, the poem in America was used as a radio and television sign-off by many, many um, DJs and uh, television personalities, um, most famously probably by William Conrad and Orson Welles. It, the poem was also carried in Neil, Neil Armstrong's pocket during the lunar landing in August of 1969. Uh, also in uh, the winter of January, in the winter of 1986, President Ronald Reagan uh, quoted from the first and last lines in a televis televised address after the, um, the tragedy of the Challenger shuttle. So um, this poem has resonance within Canada and Britain, but its fame is, is very American. It's uh, incredibly famous in America and um, famous in Canada and the state in Britain, but, but very, um, very well known in America. So um, this is a biography of Diane Ackerman. She was born in 1948 as well an American, earned her master's and her PhD from Cornell. Her master's is a master's of fine arts. She's a poet, essayist, and naturalist. She's the author of um, two dozen highly acclaimed works of nonfiction and poetry, including The Zookeeper's Wife. And I think probably her most famous book is A Natural History of the Senses, which, which came out in the early 90s or mid 1990s. Uh, this is her sonnet, Sweep Me Through Your Many Chambered Heart, and uh, it goes, I, I will read it just because um, you only have a text copy. Sweep me through your many chambered heart, if you like, or leave me here flushed amid the sap ooze and blossom one more dish in the banquet called April, or think me hard on all your days of women, weeks later till I felt your arms around me like a shackle, heard all the sundown wizardries the fired body speaks. Tell me why, if it was no more than this, the unmuddled tumble, the renegade kiss. Today, wrapped in a still life and unaware, my paintbrush dropped like an amber hawk. Thinking I'd heard your footfall on the stair, I listened heartwise for the knock. So, um, when we look at her sonnet, she has merged uh, the Italian and the English sonnets together uh, to create quite a different sonnet and poem. Her rhyme scheme is a hybrid of the two. Her rhyme scheme is A, B, B, A, C, D, D, C, E, E, F, G, F, G. Her volta or turn occurs on the line, ninth line, very standard in the Italian sonnet. And her theme of unrequited love are definitely um, signs to are a nod toward the Italian sonnet. She breaks from convention in numerous ways. She tosses out iambic pentameter. Um, she inverts the notion of unrequited love. We're seeing it very uniquely from a female perspective. So she's also breaking a lot of conventions as well. Um, Sweet me through your many chambered heart. Uh, is just this um, really, really beautiful and interesting sonnet. And one of the reasons I really want some of you to look at sonnets are because many of you like rhyming. And if you're going to rhyme, it should be in a form. So even if you're like Ackerman and you use the form very, it is bendable. So she's taking the form and using it in unique ways. She still has her turn. She has a hybrid rhyme scheme, but she does have one. Pay attention for those of you who really love to rhyme. And she has kept that theme of the Italian sonnet of unrequited love, but she's really turned it on its head. So, um, you know, we're looking at um, a very unique way uh, first of all, even that we're looking through the eyes of a woman, most Italian sonnets are written from a male vantage point. So that is as, as well quite unique. 
I think also um, her rhyme scheme is really, really wonderful. It's not heavy handed. It doesn't have a weird sing songy, which it often happens with English um, poetry that is rhyming. It ends up kind of sounding sing songy. And also um, her content is um, really unique in that um, she's uh, talking about kind of this kind of casual affair, a physical kind of affair where she has felt clearly more connected. And um, she's even surprised by this, where she says to us, tell me why, if it was no more than this. So if, if this affair was nothing more than a physical kind of meeting, then why is she stopping to and wondering if that is his footstep she's hearing and she's waiting to hear him knock on the door. So her Volta is also really interesting. So her content is surprising in a sonnet. Um, the content with McGee's poem is um, the, the, a very traditional English sonnet in that it is um, aspiring and uh, you know looking at nature in new ways and a real close connection with um, God, nature, and how high he might reach. So um, these are two very famous and very different aspects of, of looking at a the same or similar forms. If you want to rhyme, and by all means go right ahead, but I'm going to suggest if you are really committed to rhyming, then I'm going to suggest that you become equally committed to form, that you look at form poetry such as sonnets, pantoums, um, villanelles, etc., and um, become really invested in how to make the most of rhyme. Uh, you have to remember, unlike Italian, which is um, a beautiful language to rhyme with all those vowels, uh, English is a rhyme challenged language. Our words do not end like the Italian words in those beautiful, beautiful, long voweled sounds. So um, that is also something to keep in mind. And um, also keep in mind, don't you don't rely on rhymes that have been completely saturated within poetry or you end up kind of um sounding almost cliched like this is tired and true and you're just recycling it or your derivative um so this lecture is really really um meant towards those people that are interested in rhyme. And I'm suggesting if you have rhymed, then you certainly take on this sonnet form as perhaps one of the poems for your portfolio. So um, thank you very much. I hope that you've enjoyed these poems. Uh, Ackerman's poem is one of my favorite sonnets. Um, and um, I, um, I hope you're having a lovely week and be well. Okay, thank you.